Welcome, welcome, welcome. You are here for a Sefer study on Tuesday. Uh, you can obviously see the guests we have in the room today. Nick Ewing, uh, also Bill Amato, uh, Minister M.L. Kimball from Kingdom Followers, Yahusha Hamashiach. Uh, very excited to have. Uh, this is the core four. You know, whether you know it or not, when we started doing these, this is really the core four of how these Tuesdays and Thursdays started. So it uh, feels powerful to be connected with my brothers in the room today. And uh, we're going to get into it. So uh, let me see here. I'm going to wind up sharing my screen because we will be getting in the Sefer. And then uh, just as a, a preface, you will hear different names for what you may be used to hearing as far as um, uh, the names of Jesus, who you will hear referred to as Yahushua Hamashiach, and then even the name of, of God. Uh, you will hear uh, referred to as Yahuwah, not Yahweh, uh, or Elohim. And then you're going to get the chance to hear the Hebrew names for some of the places. And you'll you'll even get a chance to hear some of the um, Hebrew uh, other terms. So we're going to go a little bit deeper and we're going to get into the Apocrypha. So stay with us here, folks. So let me jump over here to the Sefer. And this is what we use in order to access the Apocrypha. And once again, you can download the Sefer on your device. And then, gentlemen, um, this is the prayer today. Blessed are you, Yahuwah, forever and ever, for giving us the spirit of peace by the spirit of the Messiah. Blessed are you, Yahuwah, forever and ever for giving us the spirit of peace by the spirit of Messiah. Powerful. All right. Because peace is something that we need. So let's get into this. Um, gentlemen, when we left off, I got some bookmarks here. Um, we were in Jasher. And do you have the bookmark where we were in Jasher? Is it about 35? You, anybody bookmark there? I think we're at like 86. Did, no, we're well, I got Jasher 86 1 here, so we made it that far in Jasher, did we? I think so. That's what I've got 86 and 1. Okay, cool. Before Let's, then was 82 and 1. I got that too. And one. Okay, cool. I got the same thing. Let's jump in there. I'm right there. Y'all with me? <laughs> okay. Yeah, I got it bookmarked too. Okay. All right. Um, so at that time, after the pestilence, Yahuwah said to Moshe, who is Moses, and to Eleazar, son of Aaron, the priest, saying, number the heads of the whole community of the children of Yashriel, which is Israel, from 20 years old and upward, all the went forth in the army, and Moshe and Eleazar numbered the children of Yashriel after their families and the number of all the Yashriel, which are the Israelites, uh, uh, was 700,730. And the number of children of the Levi, which is the Levites from one month old and upward was 23,000. And amongst these, there was not a man of those numbered by Moshe and Aaron in the wilderness of Sinai. And so Sinai, obviously, Sina, Sinai, you've seen it before. And then for Yahuwah, and then when you look at Yahuwah in here, I am he who breathes life. Behold, the nailed hands had told them that they would die in the wilderness. So they all died and not one had been left of them, excepting where it says Caleb, that is Caleb, the son of Yephanan. So you'll see this is the son of Jeff, uh, Yephunah. He will be prepared, the name of two different Israelites, and Yahusha. But this is Joshua, as you know, uh, the son of Nun. And then when you look at Nun perpetually, Nun, the father of Yahusha, the Ephraims. So here you go. And then it was after this that Yahuwah said to Moshe, say unto the children of Yezreel to avenge upon the Midians. And so I think it's important to take a look right here at Midian. Now, Midianites. Midianites. Now, Midian 
is the son of Abraham. So you mm -hmm. got to realize this was Hebrew blood. Mm -hmm. And what I had missed before when Moses had ran back to Midian, he was running back to his own people through that Lydians. Mm -hmm. So there's your Midian, mm -hmm. right? And Midian. And speak up too. Oh. Speak up. Midian, Midian is the son of Abraham and Keturah. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Yeah, that is right. That is right. That is right. Very good. Very good. Mm -hmm. That was good. Mm -hmm. That was good, sir. Mm -hmm. And then we have the cause of the brethren, the children of Israel, and Moshe did so, and the children of Israel chose from amongst them 12,000 men being 1,000 to a tribe, and they went to Midian. And the children of Yashriel warred against Midian, and they slew every male, also the five princes of Midian, and Balaam, the son of Beor, did they slay with the sword. And the children of Israel took the women of Midian captive with their little ones and their cattle and all belonging to them, and they took all the spoil and all the prey, and they brought it to Moshe and Eleazar to the plains of Moab, and Moshe and Eleazar and all the princes of the assembly went forth to meet them with joy, and they divided all the spoil of Midian, and the children of Yashriel had revenged upon Midian for the cause of their brethren, the children of Israel. And then somebody want to pick up in 87? I can move the screen, but you just have to read loudly so okay. it can be recorded. Sure, I'll read. Go ahead. Okay, well, let's see, I can move this. Put it up to the side. Yep, just push it all the way to the side and it's a thumbnail, one side or the other. Oh, thanks, Nick. <laughs> okay, excuse me. At that time, Yahuwah said to Moses, Behold, your days are approaching to an end. Take now Yahusha, the son of Nun, your servant, and place him in the tabernacle, and I will command him. And Moshe did so. And Yahuwah appeared in the tabernacle in a pillar of cloud. And the pillar of cloud stood at the entrance of the tabernacle. And Yahuwah commanded Yahusha, the son of Nun, and said unto him, Be strong and courageous, for you shall bring the children of Yashael to the land, which I swore to give unto them, and I will be with you. And Moshe said to Yahusha, Be strong and courageous, for you will make the children of Yashael inherit the land, and Yahuwah will be with you, and he will not leave you nor forsake you, be not afraid nor disheartened. And Moshe called to all the children of Yasharel and said unto them, You have seen all the good which Yahuwah Elohaika has done for you in the wilderness. Now, therefore, observe all the words of this Torah and walk in the way of Yahuwah Elohaika. Elo, Elo, Oh, okay. <laughs> Yahuwah, turn not from the way which Yahuwah has commanded you, either to the right or to the left. So and, can we stop, Rufan? Yes, sure, sir. Sure. Yes, sir. Any yes, time, sir. brother. Any time, brother. So is that, is that right where we get to Deuteronomy when he told them choose life or death? And he also told them that I know you guys are not going to obey the law. Mm -hmm. I know you guys are not going to follow. Mm -hmm. this right where we're talking in the same mm -hmm. parallel what we know in the 66 mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yep 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 this is exactly there yeah because we had the numbering of the children of Israel happening which you know obviously took place too mm -hmm. that's in numbers and kings I think mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah this is a this is a this is the this is a numbering before uh you get to kings uh this when, is numbers and numbers yeah this would be numbers and numbers or mm -hmm. obviously the early parts of Deuteronomy uh your kings are going to happen after Moses was already dead um mm -hmm. at the onset of Joshua's yeah. uh, uh trek yeah. so um this would have been the Deuteronomy Levitical I got gotcha. you so it was sure. just like it mentioned I think it was mentioned in Kings though but it's probably just like a backstory that it might have just told sure, or something I'm sure okay. I got gotcha. you. Yep, and it's right. happened Understood. multiple times, different places too. But so. didn't Moses get in trouble for sin? Didn't got his first sin had something to do with the numbering of the children of Israel? And I can't remember what it was. So I don't remember if it was him. Was it Moses? It was that definitely got Moses. Okay, so <laughs> um, what was that? Something that he did wrong with the numbering, because they say that Moses was guilty of two sins. Okay. 
The one was the, the something with the numbering of the, the children of Israel. Mm -hmm. And then the other was when he he, he smote at the rock. Right? Mm -hmm. So I don't know what he did with the numbering of the children of Israel that was considered a sin. Yeah, I can't remember either myself. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I can't remember myself either. Okay. Um, but we can Google look it for yeah, sure. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Um, we're gonna look it up <laughs> you better believe it i don't want to be uh swagger if i don't give you what i'm talking about here so <laughs> let's see here <clears throat> after 40 years of leading a rebellious nation in the desert one sin prevented moses from entering into the promised land there's something in numbers um yeah, I, I I thought it was somebody else. I could be one thousand percent incorrect. Um, this is uh, yeah. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. I, maybe I'm wrong. I thought Moses got. I thought it was something that had to do with uh, Moses and the numbering of the children of Israel. But I guess I'm wrong. I can't find it. Uh, so well, it must be this wrong. is the third time of my encountering this story of the numbering of children of Israel. Two times in the Bible, regular 66 and this one. Yeah. But the two instances is where they like say where the Bible is contradictory. Uh, where one says uh, uh, it puts you know Yahuwah responsible for the numbering of the children of Israel. Another one, Satan responsible for the numbering of the children of Israel. Well, you guys do a whole lot of talk without scripture. Let's yeah, get, yeah. I'm gonna get them there. Yeah, let's let's get let's get to some, and it's not a contradiction. Yeah, 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 I don't yeah. It all sounds great, but let's yeah. let's get to scripture today. Yeah. We are about scripture. All right. <laughs> so it's a it's a cultural thing. That's all it was. That's so, fine. Yeah. yeah, let's let's talk in terms of scripture. Uh, we have a live a live intelligent audience that <laughs> doesn't care about <laughs> your thoughts and or opinions. <laughs> they want to see it. They want to know opinion. where. <laughs> but they don't have a call mark. So we 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 need what exactly pinpoint in scripture so well, uh, we can easily get over there to that and pull that up right well, here. Well, according to Numbers chapter okay. 20, yes, verse 1 through 13, this it talks about him striking the rock. But let me go there. Yeah, striking the rock was different than the number, and we know that for a fact. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But now let, I can pull I that up. He did something with the numbers. I just can't. I don't know. And like I said, the story rings familiar, but I just swear it was somebody else. And David. It was David. Okay. It was David. Okay. It was David. Somebody else. It was David. Yeah, somebody it else. David. It was David. Cool. I, I was so wrong. that's Fair where enough. that's where David or the Lord was angry yeah. with it, against him uh, yeah. for the numbering of the children yeah. of Israel. It okay. And uh, I was wrong. And it, yeah, no and worries. that's that's where it says like there's a two parts where yeah. one says God, the other one says Satan. But yeah. the Hebrew culture, I guess, at that time, if you were in charge and you allowed something to happen, the credit went to you, regardless if you were the one that carried it out. Mm -hmm. So if, if 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 Yahuwah allowed it to happen, even though Satan is responsible for the act, credit goes to Yahuwah because he is the ultimate that allows anything to go forth, whether it's good or bad. He's the one that says yay or nay. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, I agree. Yeah. I agree. He's so that's where the two differences were, where they were trying to find a contradiction in the Bible, and they weren't. It was just a different writing of culture between the two different writings at the time. That's all. There okay. was absolutely no contradiction. Okay, that's all. So that's what we were getting to. That. That's what I was trying to say. Cool. No that's problem. All. Good. We got we got information. Yeah. I was wrong. I, I said the wrong guy. I called out the wrong name. It was a. It was David. It wasn't Moses. Yeah, yep. it was. It was David. It had us all. It had us all confused for a moment. No, it's all good. It's all good. We good. It, it, no, that's but we we are studying to show ourselves yeah, approved. Yeah. We didn't leave and go for without the accurate information, which we're intelligent enough to look it up real quick and then get the scripture to support what we're saying. And that that clears all the information. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. And we did just that, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We did just that. I thought it was powerful. Way those things should work. Perfect. All right, so I think uh, seven. And Moshe taught the children of Israel commandments and judgments and Torah to do in the land as Yahuwah had commanded him. 
and he taught him and they taught them <clears throat> and he taught them the way of Yahuwah and his Torah. Behold, they are written upon the sepher of the Torah of Elohim, which he gave to the children of Yasharel by the hand of Moshe. And Moshe finished commanding the children of Yasharel, and Yahuwah said to him, saying, Go up to the Mount Averim and die there, and be gathered unto your people as Aaron your brother was gathered. Yeah, whoa, whoa, wait, 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 stop right there. Mount Aver, what can you hit that? What is that? What is that? Is that is that Abraham? Hold on, I'm sorry. Here we're go uh, to Mount Abraham. Yep, so, yep, here you go. This is region beyond uh Ab Arim, a place in Israel. So this is not uh I don't think this is Abraham's mountain per se, but it is obviously a name that is close, and it could be one thousand percent Abraham's mountain. Okay. And that was in verse nine, right? Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. All right. So now I'm on verse 10. And Moshe went up as Yahuwah had commanded him, and he died there in the land of Moab by the order of Yahuwah in the 40th year from Yasharel going forth from the land of Mitzrayim. And the children of Yasharel wept for Moshe in the plains of Moab for 30 days, and the days of weeping and mourning for Moshe were completed. This is why you cannot mourn over somebody for seven years that passed away. Yeah. I mean, this is a there's a fine line between mourning and worshiping the dead. Mm -hmm. Because if you look at this, even Moses, they only mourned for him a certain amount of time. Yeah. Yeah. They followed him 40 years. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, well, welcome, Sue. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, we're in the middle of suffer studies, but we appreciate you joining us today. And uh, you, we'll have the recording, so you'll be able to catch up at the end if you want. And we'll obviously have the words on the screen. And if you can't hear somebody, just go ahead and say, speak up. Uh, we're all in the same room. Uh, but if you can't hear, speak up. But thank you for joining the call with us today. All right. Next person want to pick up? <sighs> okay. Uh, well, how, how do I get it pulled up so I can read it? Can you see that? You can't see it on the screen. Oh, oh your screen. Okay. Yep. And now, okay. unless you want this, no, I got, I got, no, I got a separate no, right over no, here. I, can read I got the right separate in the black box. I'll I pull out the big no, boy no, separate. No, I can read it right Okay. <laughs> okay. Big boy. Let's see here. I got to get rid of Terrence. I'll go get rid of him so I can see. Slide me right. to the left or right in a thumbnail. Okay. Let's see here. Oh, that was crazy. Okay. Okay. And, and I can actually okay. give you this. You want this? Here. This oh, is well, I mean, I can see it now. I mean, but this is screening. You can move it and everything from my phone. Okay. There you go. Okay. I don't need that. Go ahead. There you go. Okay. And it was after the death of Moses that Yahuwah said to Yahusha Joshua, the son of Nun, saying, rise up and pass the Yarden, Jordan, to the land which I have given to the children of Israel, and you shall make the children of Israel inherit the land. Every place upon which the sole of your feet shall tread shall belong to you from the wilderness of Lebanon unto the great river, the river Parath shall be your boundary. No man shall stand up against you all the days of your life. Wow. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. Mm -hmm. Only be strong and of good courage to observe all the Torah, which Moses commanded you. Turn not from the eat from the way either to the right or to the left in order that you may prosper in all that you do now i want to stop right there too now obviously from our reading in kings uh remember when joshua did actually take over though he had success yep he, he had success until he died and then even the elders yep. of israel um there was still success in his generation until they died yeah and then the canaanites and the philistines yeah yeah all right well, definitely the Philistines can't remember the Canaanites for sure. And Yahusha commanded the officers of Israel saying, pass through the camp and command the people saying, prepare for yourselves provisions. For in three days more you will pass the Jordan to possess the land. And the officers of the children of Israel did so. And they commanded the people and they did all that Yahusha had commanded. And Yahusha sent two men to spy out the land of Jericho. And the man went and spied out Jericho. And at the end of seven days, they came to Yahushua in the camp and said to him, 
Yahuwah has delivered the whole land into our land, and the inhabitants thereof are melted with fear because of us. And it came to pass after that, that Yahushua rose up in the morning and all Israel with them. And they journeyed from Shittim, and Yahushua and all of Israel with him passed the Jordan. And Yahushua was 82 years old when he passed the Jordan with Israel. Now stop, one quick question for the group. Why were the inhabitants on the other side of the Jordan scared? Giants. There you go. There you go. Now, 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 but why were the inhabitants scared? The inhabitants, what do you mean? So they said that, I know that the spies were scared because they saw giants in the land. Mm -hmm. Now, the question, though, is to the group is why were the inhabitants on the other side of the Jordan, the land they were about to go take over, why were those inhabitants scared? And that's where the giant, where the giants were, where that's where they were, right? They, so were, they were, they were on the other side of the Jordan. The spies got sent out. They seen the spot. The spies looked over. They saw his giants in the land. They came back. They made them stay in the wilderness for 40 years. And now they're about to go into the promised land. Finally, right? Not with Moses, but with Joshua. But why were the inhabitants inside on the other side of the Jordan scared or filled with fear? Because the Israelites were powerful people. Correct. Now, what had they done in that most oh, recent time multiplied. span? Yeah, they were big, but what had they done in order for the inhabitants, according to the 66? Because the 66 is the key to this answer is in there. What had they done that made them scared? And I know this. I'm going to give you a tip. I know this. Judah. Think about the children of Israel, the 12 tribes. Let's go, let's go who the tribes, right? Mm -hmm. Judah. What did Judah do? Was that the butt whooping he put on a bear and all I mean all of the, that kind of stuff that and he Judah did? was the powerful. Yeah. Now where do what stories did we read about Judah? What did he do? God, he slayed kings, he slayed. I mean, there's a lot of stories about yeah. Judah. He, he's so pretty much the power, most powerful yes, he's right. out of the tribes. He, he, every battle they won, he won. He was fast. He outran. He was he outranked everybody. He was big. Yeah. So they heard what was about to happen. Mm -hmm. They heard of the strength in numbers. Because remember, the children of Israel, when they wandered for them 40 years, they tried to go this way. Then they run into King Og, Og, and he was a giant. Remember, King, okay. they destroyed him. Mm -hmm. And so you're right, one thousand percent. Cubits tall or something. Ridiculous yeah. stuff. And so the people, the inhabitants on the other side, had heard how truly, powerful, how powerful, and that they were destroying things, mm -hmm. and that truly God was with them, and that nothing could stop them because that's all they showed. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, but yeah, I need to go back and read that again. Um, and I got to get back to those lost books, uh, cause it's been a while, but powerful. Judah is my favorite character in the old Testament. It used to be, uh, Moses, but Judah is yeah, definitely read his, his letter. Mm -hmm. the, yeah. the lost books, the letter from Judah. Yeah. And the people went up from the Jordan on the 10th day of the first month and they encamped in Gigal, Gig, Gigal. What is that? Yeah, good. What is that? Gilgal. Gilgal. Gilgal yep. at the eastern corner of Jericho. And the children of Israel kept the Passover mm -hmm. in Gilgal in the plans of the Jericho on the 14th day of the month, as it is written in the Torah of Moses. Now, let me ask the question why don't we keep the Passover? I don't, I don't understand. Like, who celebrates the Passover? Why don't we keep all of it is the question. Well, I mean, if we celebrate Thanksgiving, why can't we celebrate Passover? I don't celebrate Thanksgiving. Well, I'm just saying in general, not you, yeah. but in general, like if, 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 if we celebrate all this other worldly stuff, I keep seeing the Passover pop up that they actually celebrated. And what, what changed that made we don't have to celebrate? Easter. No, no, no. The, the Passover lamb. 
the Passover lamb. Okay. The lamb. All right. Well, I'm just trying to understand. <laughs> I mean, why did it say the children of Israel kept the Passover in Jericho in the plains of Jericho on the 14th day of the month as it is written? Correct. Correct. There's a lot written there. Why ain't they keep keeping all that's written? Because you see that the Most High told Joshua, he said, you do not go from the left or the right. But our Messiah, Yahushua Hamashiach, never said that. He never said that. He never said that. Like, show me where our Savior said no. Now, with that dispensation of time, the Mosaic law, that was the requirements. But we are truly in a new dispensation than not the Mosaic law. Because th think about this. How did they get saved? It wasn't believing on the Messiah. No, it was it was <laughs> sacrificing the land. This is what I'm saying. Their whole fight, their whole their whole path to salvation was different. They was on a different plane. And they weren't even saved. They didn't go to heaven. They went to <laughs> Abraham's bosom. That's what I'm saying. So for them to be in righteousness. Okay, so, 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 so you have the Good Friday, right? Good Friday is generally the launch day of the Passover. And that goes on for eight days in the Jewish celebration. So Easter, that's where it cuts off. What For those that believe in Jesus, Easter. It just Easter comes along, Passover is gone. Easter is fake, man. I, of course it is. <laughs> yeah, you, you know we're that. We're talking about fake stuff. We know So this. we said Thanksgiving, it's fake. But that's why we don't have the pet because we re we replace things with this scam stuff that we have. <laughs> no, no, because you're not Israel for one. No, I'm not. And, oh, and you just found out that you got some Hebrew in you. Everybody ain't Hebrew. Everybody's not the children of Israel. And so the people that are <laughs> Hebrew in lineage and they still abide to the Torah, then they should be. If you abide by the Torah. Now, if you ain't that's abiding true, by the Torah. Torah, then get out of here with pieces from the Torah. It's either all the Torah or none. It's all or none for me, you know, and that's where I'm at. And then the Torah side of things, their path to standing in righteousness was different than what our path is. And I'm thankful that our path is different. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, I'm thankful that I don't have to, I didn't have to do this. That was hard. That was very hard to stand righteous. And that's why only so many people stood out. We might be counted as scoundrels right now. Sure. We might be considered heathens if it came down to us abiding by the Torah. Let's be real. I mean, let's be real. Let's be real with ourselves. The check mark against what you know about Absolutely. the Torah. I would break it every day. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. We'd be out of bounds. Yeah. We'd be right. We'd be we 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 be broke from sheeps rams lambs and bulls buying them to sacrifice the blood that is that's the way i feel and so this dispensation now which is grace i'll take that man yeah i'll take grace over the law myself personally now paul said if you want to fall back in bondage to the law go ahead <laughs> go ahead if you want to but i'll take the freedom that comes along with grace okay you already? Yes. Amen. Amen. And the man of seized at the, that time on the morrow of the Passover, and there was no more manna for the children of Israel, and they ate of the produce of the land of Canaan. And Jericho was entirely closed against the children of Israel. No one came out or went in. And it was in the second month, on the first day of the month, that Yahuwah said to Joshua, Rise up. Behold, I have given Jericho into your hand with all the people thereof. And all your fighting men shall go round the city once each day. Thus shall you do for six days. So this is the march around Jericho. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, sir. Okay. Nothing. And the priest shall blow up on chauffeurs. And when you shall hear the sound of the chauffeur, all the people shall give a great shouting that the walls of the city shall fall down. All the people shall go up every man against his opponent. And Joshua did so according to all that Yahuwah had commanded him. Can I stop right here? And then where's our soldiers? What do you mean? What do you, yeah. huh? what do you where mean? are our soldiers? Where's our soldiers? Middle East. 
No. I, no, not those. Ones. <laughs> I'm sorry. Let me be more specific. <laughs> Another characteristic of the children of Israel. They were fighting, man. What what the hell are we fighting? The repo man? Huh? What are we conquering? Huh? What are we what what territories are we taking over? They had a different call, man. It was a different time period. And think how much they had to depend upon the Lord. They they had to depend upon the Lord for water out of a rock and see bread falling from the sky. And then we get mad about our finances, but we can go sit on the toilet and take a poop. <laughs> go in our refrigerator, at least get some jelly. Might not be no peanut butter, right? I'm just keeping it real, yeah. right? And then have something soft with ripples to clean it after you're done going to the bathroom. That's what I'm saying, man. Please. And then these they, they were surrounded were by their enemies. They were in a yeah. fight. Jelly is a luxury, actually. <laughs> peanut butter. Yeah. It's usually the peanut yeah. butter that's there, yeah. not the no, jelly. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, we always got peanut butter. We all know jelly, but I eat peanut butter by the spoonful, so we better have peanut butter, you know. But it was just a different time. These were warriors, man. And then I, we, 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 we're we flowery. I'm going to be honest with you. Talking about we warriors for the Lord, soldiers for the Lord. Like, are we? <laughs> I mean, are we? Are we, what battles are we fighting? <laughs> Our own personal yeah, battles? That's really the only battles we're really fighting, at least here in this country, your own personal battles. Yeah. And not that, the time. yeah. And not that people aren't pressing the word and showing the word and building, you know, bringing believers into the body and showing them the savior. But are we really at war? These people were fighting people, mm. you know? All right. And on the seventh day, they went round the city seven times, and the priest blew upon the chauffeurs. And at the seventh round, Yahushua said to the people, shout, for Yahuwah has delivered the whole city into our hands. What is that definition of shout there? They just shouted. Yeah. Like all, screaming. Yeah, they all probably just in unison at one given point. It was not. The definition of shout, what we thought. Like, I've seen this scripture used in church, mm -hmm. and they use that as this is your chance to dance. Oh, no, no. They literally made an audible sound what? so loud. It <laughs> okay. Collapsed the wall. okay, so it was a physical, it wasn't no, the church dance. You know what I'm talking no, about? No, the church no, dance no. and the church music. No. Okay. No. Okay. No, no. You know, because so, so sound has waves. Right. And so a loud enough sound will destroy something. <laughs> right. And so that's all they did in unison together was 700,000 of them. Just think about a million people that shouted at one time the decibels what that would be. You know oh, what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. It'd yeah. be crazy. Yep. It'd okay. be crazy. Shout for Yahoo has delivered the whole city into our hands. Only the city and all that is it contains shall be a curse to Yahuwah. And guard yourselves from the accursed thing. Lest you make the camp of Israel accursed and troubled it. But all the silver and gold and brass and iron shall be consecrated to Yahuwah. Oh, I remember this. They shall come into the treasury of Yahuwah. Mm -hmm. And the people blew upon the shoulders and made a great shouting, and the walls of Jericho fell down. And all the people went up, every man straight before him, and they took the city and utterly destroyed all that was in it, both man and woman, young and old, ox and sheep and ass. With the edge of the sword. Now think about this. And it's okay. But some people wouldn't fight. Some people wouldn't kill. Even if you felt like the Lord told you. Kill them. Like kill them. I mean like seriously. I mean that's something you gotta. You gotta put that in perspective of your spirit. That you feel led by. God to go kill something. Man, they had a yoke on that man. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And they went and did it and were successful. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, it's like that now. And sorry, you know, for people in the service, you get in the service and you go kill somebody, right? On orders. But they they get lied to about the mission. You know, the government mission is never what they think, but that's a whole nother story. I'm sorry. Right. But there. obviously it's not the case here. Yep, cool. And they burned the whole city with fire. Only the vessels of silver and gold and brass and iron they put into the treasury 
of Yahuwah. And Yahushua swore at the time, saying, Cursed be the man who builds Jericho. He shall lay the foundation thereof in his firstborn. And in his youngest son shall he set up the gates thereof. And Akan, the son of Carmi, the son of uh, Zebedee, the son of Sarah, Zerah, mm -hmm. son of Judah. Mm -hmm. Judah. Mm -hmm. Well, treacherously in the accursed thing. Mm. And he took of the accursed thing and hid it in the tent. And the anger of Yahuwah was kindled against Israel. So here we go. Mm -hmm. Israel got punished, the whole camp, mm -hmm. for one mistake. Mm -hmm. And this was a son of Judah who did this. Yeah, yes. <laughs> and it was after this, when the children of Israel had returned from the burning of Jericho, burning Jericho, Yahushua sent men to spy out also Ai mm -hmm. and to fight against it. And the man went, went up and spied out Ai, and they returned and said, let not all the people go up with you to Ai, only let about 3,000 men go up and smite the city, for the men thereof are but few. And Yahushua did so, and there went up with him of the children of Israel, about 3,000 men, and they fought against the men of Ai. And the battle was severe against Israel, and the men of Ai smote. 36 men of Israel and the children of Israel fled from the before the men of Ai. And when Yahushua saw this thing, he tore his garments and fell upon his face to the ground before Yahuwah, he with the elders of Israel, and they put dust upon their heads. And Yahushua said, Why, O Yahuwah, did you bring these people over the Jordan? What shall I say after Israel has turned their backs against their enemies? Now, therefore, all the Canaanites inhabitants of the land will hear this thing and surround us and cut off our name. Those Canaanites are African. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And Yahuwah said to Yahushua, why do you fall upon your face? Rise, get you off. For Israel has sinned and taken of the accursed thing. I will no more be with them unless they destroy the accursed thing from amongst them. It's what Judah's son did. Do we know what this accursed thing oh, is? Oh, he's getting ready to say. <laughs> and Yahushua rose up and assembled the people, brought the Urim of the order of Yahuwah, and the tribe of Judah was mm -hmm. taken. And Achan, the son of Carmi, was click on, taken. Click on Achan, if you would, real quick. And I think this was a, um, okay. Trouble son Achan and Israelite. And then click on Carmi real quick and let me get that, if you would, please. Gardener of Carmi, the name of three Israelites. Thank you, sir. Okay. Uh, son of Carmi was taken. And Yahushua said to Achan, tell me, my son, what have you done? This is Judah's son. And Achan said, I saw amongst the spoil a goodly garment of Shinar and 200 shekels of silver and a wedge of gold and 50 shekels of weight. I coveted them, took them. Behold, they are all hid behold. in the earth in the midst of the tent. Mm -hmm. So he took, he was supposed to turn that stuff over to the most high. Mm -hmm. And he kept some back for himself he and tried to hide it in the earth. Lord. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. yep. And Yahushua sent men, watch what happens to him. And Yahushua, Yahushua sent men who went and took them from the tent of Achan and they brought them to Yahushua. And Yahushua took Achan and these utensils and his sons and his daughters and all belonging to him, and they brought them into the valley of Achor. And Yahushua burned them there with fire. So, and, so think not, when not, when not, when not. when you see Yahushua send down fire, when you see like your punishment for not doing what you're supposed to do result in death. We're not under that no. because we should be killing people in our own household. Yeah. We should be murdering them. Yeah. I'm serious. Not you you want to get back to the Passover? Well, then cut your son's throat off because <laughs> he stole. Right. He stole. He got caught stealing at Walmart. You know how I many of my kids got caught stealing at Walmart? Like three or four. You know, should have killed him. Man, he took him, all his utensils. Every single thing he owned, your daughters, your wife, your sons. Wait, wait, no, wait, wait. But he burned them first and then they got stoned. So you understand. He burned them. They lived through the burning because as you continue to read here, he says, 
He burned them there with fire and all Israel stoned Achan with stones. Yes. Oh, he got burnt and then stoned. So just think, when is our consequences that? It's never. It's never. not that. We're just not there. We're just not there. Unless y'all want to get to that. We can get to some gangster stuff. You know? Y'all want to get to that? No, I don't. Okay. I'm serious. I let some aggression and anger out. And they raised them over at him a heap of stone. Therefore, did he call that place the Valley of Acorn? I looked that up. It is a Valley of Acorn. It does exist. So Yahuwah's anger was appeased. And Yahusha afterward came to the city and fought against it. And Yahuwah said to Yahusha, fear not, neither be dismayed. Behold, I have given into your hand Ai, her king, and her people. And you shall do unto them as you did to Jericho and her king. Only the spoil thereof and the cattle thereof shall you take for a prey for yourselves, lay an ambush for the city behind it. So Yahushua did according to the word of Yahuwah. And he chose from, from amongst the sons of war 30,000 valiant men, and he sent them, and they lay in ambush for the city. And he commanded them, saying, When you shall see us, we will flee before them with cunning. And they will pursue us, and you shall then rise out of the ambush and take the city. And they did so. And Yahushua fought, and the men of the city went out towards Israel, not knowing that they were lying in ambush for them behind the city. And Yahushua and all Israel find, find, find themselves wearied out before them, and they fled by the way of the wilderness with cunning. And the men of Ai gathered all the people who were in the city to pursue Israel, and they went out and were drawn away from the city. Not one remained, and they left the city open and pursued Israel. And those who were lying in ambush rose up out of their places and hastened to come to the city and took it and set it on fire. And the men of Ai turned back, and behold, the smokes of the city ascended to the sky, and they had no means of retreating either one way or the other. And all the men of Ai were in the midst of Israel, some on this side and some on that side. And he smote them so that they that not one of them remained. And the children of Israel took Milos, king of Ai, alive. And they brought him to Yahushua. And Yahushua hanged him on a tree and he died. So once again, there's evidence again, there's no such thing as cross. Mm -hmm. Everybody died on a tree. This is the first picture of a crucifixion here. Yeah. Why was he hung on a tree and Yahushua wasn't? Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> so uh, let's see here. And the children of Israel returned to the city after having burned it. And they smote all those who were in it with the edge of the sword. And the number of those that had fallen of the men of Ai, both man and woman, was 12,000. Only the cattle and the spoil of the city they took to themselves, according to the word of Yahuwah, to Yahushua. And all the kings on this side of the Jordan, all the kings of Canaan, heard of the evil which the children of Israel had done to Jericho and to Ai, and they gathered themselves together to fight against Israel, Hamites. <laughs> Only the inhabitants of Gibbon were greatly afraid of fighting against Israel, lest they should perish. So they acted cunningly, and they came to Yahushua and to all Israel and said unto them, We have come from a distant land, now therefore cut a covenant with us. And the inhabitants of Gibbon overreached the children of Israel, and the children of Israel cut a covenant with them, and they made peace with them. And the princes of the assembly swore unto them, but afterwards the children of Israel knew that they were neighbors to them and were dwelling amongst them. But the children of Israel slew them not, for they had sworn to them by Yahuwah, and they had become hewers of wood and drawers of water. And Yahushua said to them, Why did you deceive me to do this thing to us? And they answered and said, him saying, because it was told to your servants all that you have done to all the kings of the Emirates, and we had, <laughs> we were greatly afraid of our lives, and we did this thing. And Husha appointed them on that day to hew wood and to draw water and to be divided themselves for slaves to all the tribes of Israel. Slaves. They weren't getting paid either. And when Melchizedek Mm -hmm. King of Jerusalem mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. heard all that the children of Israel had done to Jericho and to Ai. He sent to Hoham, king of Hebron, and to Piram, king at Yarmouth, 
and to Yapiah, king of Lachish, and to Devire, king of Elgon, saying, Wait a minute, this is Melchizedek? That's talking? not that's not Melchizedek, this is actually. Lord Sadiq, not yeah. yes. King Sadiq. Okay, yeah. okay, I was wrong. Yeah. Come up to me and help me that we may smite the children of Israel and the inhabitants of Gibbon who have made peace with the children of Israel. And they gathered themselves together with the five kings of the Amorites, Amorites, went up with all their camps, a mighty people numerous as the sand of the sea shore. And all these kings came and encamped before Gibbon, and they began to fight against the inhabitants of Gibbon. And all the men of Gibbon sent to Yahushua, saying, Come up quickly to us, help us, for all the kings of the Amorites have gathered together to fight against us. And Yahushua and all the fighting people went up from Gibbon, and Yahushua came suddenly to them and smote these five kings with a great slaughter. And Yahuwah confounded them before the children of Israel, who smote them with a terrible slaughter in Gibbon, pursued them along the way that goes up to Baal Horon unto Makeda, and they fled from before the children of Israel. And while they were fleeing, Yahuwah sent upon them hailstones from heaven. <laughs> Sounds like uh, uh, Pharaoh, mm -hmm. Egypt. And more of them died by the hailstones than by the slaughter of the children of Israel. And the children of Israel pursued them, and they smote them in the road going on and smiting them. And when they were smiting, the, smiting, the day was declining toward evening. And Yahushua said in the sight of all the people, son, stay, stand you still upon Gibbon, and you moon in the valley of Avalon, until the nation shall be, have revenged itself upon its enemies. And Yahuwah hearkened to the voice of Yahushua, and the sun stood still. This is what is written in Jasher that is mentioned in the mm -hmm. 66. Mm -hmm. The sun stood still in the midst of the heavens, and in the, it, it stood still six and 30 moments, and the moon also stood still and hastened not to go down a whole day. And there was no day like that before it or after it that Yahuwah hearkened to the voice of a man. Mm -hmm. For Yahuwah fought for Israel. Wow. It's powerful. Ain't it? Wow. That is powerful. I'd say so. Yeah. Harken to a voice of a man so he didn't listen to nobody else? Uh, you know, to stop the the, the, Sun the, the, the moon. cycles that are already set in balance. And there's probably been others that said, God, just make the sun stand still, whatever. But he hearkened to, to gotcha. that. Yeah. Harken to that. The only other time I've ever ever heard of that, and I don't, it's not from the Bible, but they say the Gerula Gospel, which is the Ethiopian, has like all the books of Enoch every. So apparently, Garima himself, when he actually like wrote it down, they say that the sun stood still and he wrote the entire book out in one day. Really? Okay. Who? All right. Y'all want to do eighty nine, or y'all want to get out of here? This is the song right here. Let me see here. We might. Because we we seen the song here. You did not rise up against them, the enemies. You did pursue them. Yeah, we've been an hour on, so I'm going to cut it for today. All right. Well, yeah. Well, good study, uh, gentlemen. Um, yeah. Always a pleasure. Um, let me bookmark this 89 right here so that we... Uh, watching you just let me save this here. Yeah. Uh, but thanks, everybody, for listening. We'll be back at you. If you missed any part of it, there will be a recording. Thank you very much. God bless you and peace. Give it the perfect.